We wanted to create a visually coherent exhibition which cut across various divides within uh, the art scene in Britain in the 1960s. So there is what's generally known as new generation abstract painting and sculpture. There's op art, uh, constructivism, um, and sort of abstract pop. Kaleidoscope is an exhibition of mainly abstract painting and sculpture from the 1960s, drawn from the Arts Council collection. And all of the art included uses repetition, sequence or symmetry as a way of achieving order. The Arts Council collection is particularly rich in abstract painting and sculpture from the 1960s, which meant we had a lot of choice. That enabled us to uh, shape a particular theme of sequence, repetition, symmetry, rather than simply doing a show of abstract art from that period. 19 out of the 25 works are from the Arts Council collection, six are not. All of those six artists are in fact represented in the collection, um, but there are certain instances where we felt a, a work from elsewhere would be more appropriate for the theme. It was really good to include the Michael Bolas sculpture from Sheffield, which I don't think had been displayed in quite a few years and actually has been restored for the exhibition. Because we've cut across different aspects of the art of the 60s, there are different reasons why artists were interested in those ways of ordering their art. For the sort of pop artists such as Anthony Donaldson or Richard Smith, they were interested in the um, repetition of images in the mass media, in packaging, in advertising, in film. The constructivists such as Mary Martin or Anthony Hill were more interested in the sort of uh, structures that underlie the visible world, which could be expressed mathematically through sequences or through proportional systems. And then the new generation sculptors such as Tim Scott, William Tucker, David Annesley, Michael Bolas and others were I think mainly interested in, in those qualities as a way of creating a sort of visual clarity uh, so which enabled their art to be sort of immediately, immediately seen in its entirety. In the 60s many artists rejected the traditional artist materials so, such as casting in bronze or painting with oils. And they painted with acrylic paints, they used steel, uh, often again painted. Uh, there is also aluminium and other forms of plastic in the exhibition. I certainly think there is a, a connection between um, the sort of burgeoning consumer culture and huge increase in technology that occurred in post-war period and um, particularly in the late 50s and through into the 60s, um, which I think can be seen in the, obviously in the embrace of new materials. Colour was, in a sense, a secondary consideration um, as a theme, but it's almost unavoidable in a show of the 60s because there's such a characteristic colour which goes across so many different forms of art at this time. But of course, colour does um, affect how the work is perceived. Um, one artwork that's particularly interesting in this regard is uh, William Tucker's Thebes, which is based on a sequence of three identical forms, one which stands directly on the ground, which is black, another which leans on that, which is yellow, and a third form, red, which leans on the, the, on the yellow. And if those three elements had all been a neutral, neutral or the same colour, um, the, the effect would be completely different. So, for example, the yellow in the middle breaks the sequence going from left to right. Um, as it sort of draws attention to itself in a way that it wouldn't do if it had it just been the middle form of the, of the three. A lot of interconnections between the works that has sort of been revealed in putting the exhibition together. The quality that I've seen which goes throughout the exhibition is this sense of weightlessness. So Tim Scott's Queen Kareem um, has these huge sort of sail-like or wing-like forms which seem to float. David Annesley's ring or Michael Bolas's sculpture touched the floor in a very minimal way, as does Anthony Carr's slow movement. And then even sculptures which have a sort of plinth or incorporate a sort of plinth-like structure, 
such as those by William Turnbull or John Dee or Kim Lim, um, they, they seem to float by having a sort of fake bottom, so the, the plinth sort of floats off the ground. And that, that sense goes throughout almost all the sculpture um, and, and almost all the painting as well. What sort of comes across is a sort of optimism about uh, the possibilities of technology and of the modern world um, and the, the products which the, the modern world was creating um, and a sense that artists could use these to create their art.